Thanks Rob and Kilmarnock appear to have lost the energy and determination they possessed under Tommy Burns and new manager Alec Totten is left with an uphill struggle to continue the impressive form we saw from them last season. They were facing a hard sight full of confidence after last week's win over Dundee United and John Cahoon, so much a vital part of the Hearts lineup, returned from injury and played a part in the opener in 10 minutes. He sent in the high cross, it dropped to John Miller who volleyed over Geddes. Nine minutes later, it was two defenders who provided the second. McKinley sent in the corner. Alan McLaren towered above the Killy defence, and his header was too quick for Geddes to reach. Hart's addition of impressive Kevin Thomas left the visitors' defence tired out and frustrated with his pace and energy up front, which on his efforts, Tommy McLean will find it hard to bring in Morris Johnston. Hart went further ahead in 75 minutes through Gary Mackay to round up an excellent performance. Hart 3, Kilmarnock 0. Kilmarnock came to Tynecastle still looking for their first win of the season, although they played well last week against Celtic. For Hearts, no involvement for out of favour Morris Johnson and Jim Bett signed at the weekend, but red tape and injury preventing him from appearing. Hearts enjoyed the best possible start. John Cahoon's cross, met by John Miller from 12 yards, 1 0 to Hearts, his second goal of the season. Hearts very much in top now, and after a series of corners, John Robertson found himself in possession on the edge of the box but his shot was touched over by Bobby Geddes. It was now one-way traffic. Kevin Thomas on the right, and his cross almost turned into the net by Neil Whitworth, recent signing from Manchester United. From Tosh McKinley's corner, Alan McLaren heading past Geddes at the far post, and it was 2-0 to Hearts. All credit to them, they didn't sit back on their lead, they were still pushing forward. That's some nice work by Kevin Thomas, setting up Stephen Frill. The chance in the box, but Geddes saving easily. Confidence was now oozing through the Jambos ranks. Look for Robertson's back heel to McKinley. A lovely touch, and his low cross was prodded just over by John Cahoon. Half-time, 2-0. Kilmarnock replaced Bobby Connor with Tom Black at half-time, and they had their first scoring chance. McLaren failing to clear and Colin McKee setting up Sean McSkimming but his shot was way off target John Robertson was back on top form a lovely chip forward there for John Miller his cross coming from the left and causing all sorts of trouble in the Kilmarnock defence before the ball was cleared Kevin Thomas should have done better Gary Mackay then came on for John Cahoon and a corner, Tosh McKinley again the corner coming in from the right it fell for Gary Mackay and the substitute picked his spot. 3-0 to Hearts, 76 minutes on the clock. And still Hearts come forward. Some nice work on the right, Frail and Robertson. The flick inside for Alan Johnson, the substitute bringing out a good save there from Geddes. Crisis? What crisis, say the Hearts fans after this performance. John Robertson looking up and seeing John Miller. But Bobby Geddes putting it just round the post. This was turning into an exhibition display now by Hearts. McKinley's free kick to Miller. Another chance, but still it was just three. Finally, a late opportunity for Kilmarnock. Bobby Williamson beating Berry, But the ball screams past the post. And that's how it finishes. A good afternoon for Hearts. Yes, it was nice to get a goal. But I could sit and pick up bonuses every week watching that kind of football. Uh, I think you, you could tell by the way the fans responded today that uh, the team played particularly well in the first half. And if you can come on with 15, 20 minutes to go and get a goal every week, that would just do me nicely.